Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See you later. That was a great presentation you made in there. Do you know I put together that entire project, including the presentation slides, just this morning? Had your whole department working on it, huh? No, I used my new Lisa personal computer. A personal computer did all of that? That's right. Incredible. The Lisa computer is incredible. In just a few moments, it helped me adjust a schedule chart. Update an entire budget. Write a memo. Which included part of the budget. Develop some graphics. And create a distribution list. And I had time to spare before my meeting. And now with my Lisa working for me, I can do this kind of project every day and still have time to relax. What's so special about Lisa? Oh, I've had other computers. But my Lisa's different. You see, it works the way I do. I can create and combine words, numbers, charts, and pictures virtually in seconds. Let me show you how I did this. You see, Lisa's screen is... Now, you can think of it as being like your office, with a desktop and other office fixtures. Now, you see what I mean about the screen? It's very graphical. Here's a place to store information, a folder. And a place to get rid of information, a waste paper basket. On the top of the screen, there's a menu bar. It tells you what kinds of functions are available at any one time. This entire arrangement is called the Desktop Manager. We control Lisa by pointing to these images on the screen with this unique item called a mouse. By moving the mouse, we move the pointer. To open my folder, I point to it and click the mouse button, selecting it. Now, by going to the menu bar and depressing that button again, the menu is displayed. The option that I point to, in this case, Opus Project, is highlighted in black. When I release the mouse button, I can see the contents of the folder. I can quickly put the documents in any folder in Lisa, and even store folders inside other folders, just as I do in my office. Now, earlier today, I filed a project schedule in this folder. Let's retrieve it. I go back to the file print menu and choose this option, which opens the document on my desktop. I can now see what the document contains. This is only a small part of the whole project. If I want to see all of it, I can open the page layout menu and choose reduce to fit. The whole chart fits on my screen at one time. But since I only want to work with tasks in the next few weeks, I'll only show part of the chart. The circles are milestones and the boxes are the tasks to be completed. Inside each box is the name of the task, who's responsible for it and how long it will take. I can also see two dates associated with each task and milestone. This one is the latest I must start a task if it's to be completed on time, and this one is the latest I have to complete the task if I'm not to delay the whole project. With Lisa, I can update the structure of my chart using just the mouse. To add a task to my flowchart, I draw this box with the mouse and enter the name of the new task from the keyboard. I can delete this old line using the mouse and draw in these new lines. The critical path is automatically updated to include this task. The heavily bordered boxes on the bottom show the connected tasks that take the longest. That's why it's called the critical path. I can rearrange the boxes to make the chart easier to read. All I do is grab the box with the mouse and move it over.
I assigned Robert to the new task and gave him five days to complete it. Let's see how this new job will affect his workload. I'll ask Lisa for a resource chart. I can see that with this new project, Robert will probably be overbooked, but Stephen has some slack time. Once the project begins, well, I can monitor work progress by entering the days remaining on each task. which automatically updates the resource chart. Lisa Project simplifies scheduling, so I can manage my resources better. Now let's take a look at the budget that I prepared for this project. But first, let's set this document aside. I simply go to the file print menu with the pointer and choose set aside schedule. It goes to a place on my desktop so I can easily go back to it. And updating a budget this morning was simple, with the help of Lisa Calc. Lisa Calc allows me to easily develop budgets, financial analyses, cost models, and much more. Let's look at my Opus budget, which is now opened on my desktop. If I wanted to see the assumptions I made when setting up this model, well, I could scroll up. I can also scroll down and to the left and right. I can reduce the size of the print so I can see more of the chart. I can now see the entire model on the screen. Let's say I wanted to change the values in one of the cells. I point to the cell, press the mouse button to select it, and then type in the new value, which automatically replaces the old one. Now, Watch what happens to my expenses if I start with a staff of 10 people instead of four. Let's see if there's some way I can reduce my expenses. Now, we could revise the assumptions spelled out below the model. Let's see what effect reducing employee expenses would have on my deficit. I'll change it to 500 a month. Now I've corrected my deficit. If I want to insert any part of this budget into a memo or a report, I use the mouse to select the information. I then go to the edit menu and choose copy. I've now made a copy of the model which I can use later. I'll set aside the budget for now. To create a memo, like the one I have here, I begin with Lisa Wright. Lisa's powerful word processing tool, and I type my memo. Then I add the Lisa Calc model I just copied by positioning the pointer and pressing the mouse button. I get a vertical flashing bar to show me where the insertion will be. When I choose paste from the edit menu, the model is added into my memo. I can also insert text, say a heading above this model. Again, I select my insertion point and just type. I can even center it and then change the text style. How about bold? 